Uh, my name is Michael Becker, and I'm with Keller Williams. I'm on the Mike McCann team. Uh, I am licensed in Pennsylvania and New Jersey, and this is going to be my 20th year uh, in re residential. And I, I got to tell you, I, this has been probably one of the toughest years. It's a phenomenon um, because of the amount of demand with, with less inventory that's in play right now. And it's not just lo locally. I see it in the city. I see it in the suburbs. And I also see it at the shore. And from what Ron is saying, it's very, very important when you begin this pro process, in my opinion, is to have two key components. One, the most important, is a really good thorough pre-approval. Um, and when you have that pre-approval, you'll you will narrow down what area, like what price range are you really looking at? And it's important because with inventory being so thin uh, and with there being such of a multiple interest in, in inventory, you really need to start the process right with a good pre-approval. Secondly, you really need, in my opinion, a seasoned realtor. Someone who has seen this, this craziness where you're really going in to look at a house and literally when you're walking in there, there's 20, 30 people looking at the same house that you're looking at. So the key component here is to really have pre-approval, have a seasoned realtor that knows how to put an agreement of sale together. And once you have a nice agreement of sale together with a pre-approval from a great solid bank, um, it really makes a difference when the seller or the seller's agent uh, on the other end is, is looking at the process. Ron, if you could uh, flip to the next section. Um, so how do you find a seasoned real realtor? I, it's in, in this market, you really need, first, you need to look online. You can look on Zillow. If you look on Zillow, they have what's called a five-star re review. You can look at that. Um, it's great. It's great throughout the country. It tells you all different states. Um, what I can tell you is Zillow is very thorough on their re reviews. Um, you could also look what's up and coming right now is called a Google profile. So when you go on to Google business profile, you look up someone's name, look at the pictures, look at uh, their, their reviews. So you, you can look at all the search engines, Zillow, Realtor.com, Trulia, Google profile. Um, and a lot of times when you interview an agent, um, you might want to ask them for some re recommendations. I always give names, phone numbers. So this way you could give your information to your client and say, listen, here's my experience. Uh, if you want to call Mary Smith or Bob Jones, here's their phone number, please call them. Um, and I think that's really a way to find a good realtor today. Um, Ron, if you could go to the next so uh, what you really want to look at is when you're with a realtor and you want to look at how they're affiliated, uh, I always look at uh, vendors that are not in-house. And the reason why I go with vendors that aren't in-house in is uh, because the vendors that are out of house, they're more, they, they want to earn your business uh, and the more expeditious and trying to fo follow up. And that's always worked really well for me. Um, the other key feature is when you want to look at a realtor, you want to look at what type of uh, fees that they charge. You want to look at their commission rate. You want to look at any other fees as far as clo closing fees. But fees, in my opinion, uh, are secondary. You really want to look at the agent itself. You want to look at a seasoned agent. And the reason why is because a seasoned, a seasoned agent can negotiate, uh, knows how to save you more, knows how to go through the process of putting a agreement to sale together. Uh, if you're on the other end, if you're looking to sell a house and you're hiring an agent, you want to ask questions. Uh, what do I get for a fee? Do I get a per professional photographer? 
What type of advertising? Um, are there going to be open houses? Do you have a staff that will be available if, if you're not available? Uh, how how are, are you available? Are you available from nine to five? Are you available from eight to 10? Uh, this, this market, you really have to be available uh, seven days a week. Uh, I, I can tell you my days are long and hard. I probably put anywhere between 12 and 14 days and it's, it's tough. You have to be available in this market because once a property comes on the market, you have to be ready with your buyer um, to move forward. Uh, you really want to look at uh, how many years experience an agent has. In this market right now, uh, you have a lot of agents that are basically in the market because the market's good. Uh, once the market changes, which is probably going to be somewhere in the, in the future because this has been a long run, uh, but it's also a phenomenon because even though it's a long run, there's still no inventory. And there's a circle of buyers that literally every time that I go in to showing a home, I see the same age, the same people going in and out looking at the properties. Uh, so you really want to see, you want you really want to go with an agent who has history, who has seen all the different markets. Um, you want to ask them, how many houses have they sold in the last two years? Are they part-time? Are they full-time? I can tell you, uh, I'm a full-time agent, and I have no idea how a part-time agent can do it because it just takes so much time and work with phone calls, advertising, putting the listing together, response time, uh, showing the property. It, it is really, really critical um, that you go with a season agent and an agent that's full full time. Ron, if you can go on to the next slide. Current marketing conditions. Uh, boy, this is a toughie. So I am fortunate in the last 20 years that I have been selling in Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Uh, city, suburbs, and the shore. And what I can tell you is all the markets are pretty much the same. Inventory is very, very difficult to find. Um, very limited inventory. When you start to get specific about good inventory, and what's the definition of good inventory? Good inventory is something that is moving, ready to go. And a lot of times uh, when both husband and wife are working, uh, very, very difficult to have the house fixed. So they want something that's completely done, done over. So when you're looking for a house that's, that's perfectly new, very, very difficult to find, which causes a multiple bidding situation. So what I can tell you is uh, city, suburbs, sure, very limited inventory. Most of the houses that I'm putting under contract right now Unfortunately, uh, they're waiving the inspections uh, because there's just so many, so many buyers looking to buy the house. They're going well over asking price. Uh, I, it's very, very rare that I'm seeing houses selling close to asking price. I've seen them sell five, 10, 15, 20, 50, 100,000 over asking price. Uh, I just heard of a house that sold yesterday. Uh, it was in the suburbs. It was 400,000 and ended up selling for 675,000. So it's very, very, very competitive. And that's why it's key to what Ron was saying is you really have to have the pre-approval. You have to have the seasoned realtor and you really have to make sure that when you present the agreement of sale, it's presented clean in the right way, terms, condition, and you'll have a better chance of buying a home. Ryan, if you can go to the next. Okay, so where are the properties posted? So normally how it starts is I get the listing. And when I get the listing from the client, we put it into the MLS service. Once it goes into the MLS service, 
uh, the listing goes viral. When I say goes viral, what happens is Zillow comes in, Realtor.com comes in, all the search engines come in. And what they do is they get all the information and they post it on their site. Uh, the MLS system is the most accurate of all the systems. And sometimes when you're looking at Zillow per, per se, it's not going to be as accurate because Zillow has a different engine than the MLS system. And when they try to speak together, sometimes it's just not accurate. Just to give you an example, uh, if a property goes under contract, uh, it will be sitting in the MLS as active under contract, which means if they're doing uh, an inspection or if there is a contingency. So it's basically pending, but in the MLS, it shows as active under contract. On Zillow, it would say active. So you don't know how many times buyers call me and say, hey, Mike, I'd like to see this property. Um, it's showing active. And the first thing I do is go in the MLS, look to see if it's active under contract, because if it's active under contract, that means that it's it's pending. So uh, the MLS is the best way to look at the system. And usually what a good realtor does is once they sit down with you, they get all your information for what you're looking to buy, bedrooms, bathrooms, area, um, price range. You go into the MLS, you input that into the MLS, and then on a daily basis, the second a property comes on the market, uh, you, would, you would receive an email and it would show you all the information and then you would call your agent up and say, hey, I'd like to see the home. And that's really the best way, in my opinion, to look. Uh, but also, if you wanted to look on your own uh, in the evenings, Zillow, Realtor.com, uh, HomeSnap, all these search engines are great, but just remember, it's not 100% accurate. Ron, if you can go to the next, writing an offer. Writing an offer is extremely important. And the reason why it's important is because of your competition um, and the amount of inventory. And you want to make sure that the offer is written correctly. Um, it's clean. And there's really no, no mistakes. Uh, and when I say no mistakes, you want to make sure the, the, the agent, when they write the agreement of sale, Every box is checked. Everything is filled in pro properly. Uh, when you're presenting the agreement to the seller's agent, you want to make sure it's attached with a pre-approval uh, and also a BFI, which is a buyer financial information. It breaks down uh, the buyer's financial information. So it shows that you're a credible, strong buyer. So when you submit an offer in, it's very important that you have three items, the pre-approval, buyer financial, and a clean agreement of sale. Uh, when you put the agreement of sale together, usually there's, depending on the market, there's usually two deposits. Normally what happens is your first deposit is due within the first five days. And then what I normally would do is your second deposit would be due 48 hours after mutual acceptance of a home inspection. In this market, there's very few home inspections uh, because of the com competitiveness with other buyers because of there's less inventory. And what a lot of people are doing is they're just putting down one lump sum as far as a uh, de deposit. Settlement dates are normally in that 30 to 45 day price range. Uh, that's kind of the norm and that's the norm throughout the city suburbs and sure. So it's basically all the same. Uh, appraisals, appraisals are, are coming through. Uh, so once you go through the process, once an offer is accepted, um, the next phase would either be a, would be a home inspection and after the home inspection would be an appraisal. The, the bank would come out, bank would appraise the property. Uh, and it's difficult. It's difficult right now because what's happening is 
when you look at the previous sales, this market is moving so fast. The previous sales are not keeping up with what is selling on the market. In other words, if a property sold and settled and is in the MLS system a month ago, properties that are pending are selling for a lot more. So the, the appraisal process right now is tricky, um, but it seems like it's going through fine. Um, Brian, if you can go to the next one. Okay, I think we spoke about the deposit money. Uh, most of the deposit monies in this market, they are between the two and 5%. Uh, that's kind of the, the, the norm. And I can tell you as a buyer, when a seller is looking at a agreement of sale, they really look at how strong the person's uh, buyer fi financial information is, which means their job, uh, the, the, the funds that they have in their bank, and also their deposit. Deposit makes a really big difference. So as much as you could put down in that two to five price range, I think it's very, very in, important to, to have. <laughs>